So we're going to look at, at how to go about method development in a systematic way, which allows you to achieve results that are reproducible, repeatable, and robust. We'll also look briefly at the end of this seminar as to how these processes can be used in order to look at method validation as well. In the last seminar, um, we looked at laser diffraction explained. That covered the basics of laser diffraction, including what light scattering is and how the instrument works, as well as some examples of applications of laser diffraction. In future seminars, we're going to look at how to select optical properties. We'll look at some troubleshooting um, ideas in what, what can go wrong, session four. And then we'll look at setting meaningful specifications in the, in the last session of this math class series. Before we get started, I'll have a brief overview of what we're going to cover in this seminar. So we'll start off with some of the definitions of the terms that we use when we talk about um, method development, like repeatability and reproducibility. We'll then look at some advice that you can get for the expected performance of a laser diffraction system. We'll look at the measurement process, so um, standard operating procedures, what we'll be setting up in those in order to get reproducible measurements. We'll then look at what the two main factors in getting a reproducible measurement are. So first is sampling, and then we'll look at dispersion. We'll look at both wet dispersion, looking at disbursements of factors and additives, and the measurement settings that you might use, as well as dry dispersion, whereas we'll look at um, pressure titrations and getting good at, uh, agreement between wet and dry measurements. And finally, we'll look at how we can apply these things to method validation. So before we start going through the process of method development, we need to first look at some of the parameters in which the guidance that you might be getting from method development is based. So first of all, the repeatability of a measurement. So this is determined from repeated measurements of, of the same sample, so the same aliquot or subsample that we're measuring a number of times. So it tests the instrument and the state of dispersion. So what we're going to see from the repeatability test is whether the, the sample is in a stable state of dispersion, whether it's agglomerating or dissolving or in other ways changing with time. Secondly, we're going to look at reproducibility. So this is a slightly more challenging test as it covers measurements carried out on more than one sample or operator or instrument. So as well as testing the instrument and the state of dispersion, we're going to test the sampling method as well. So in looking at reproducibility, we're also testing how the sample is extracted from your bulk material. And finally, what we'll look at is testing robustness, and that involves deliberately altering the method parameters, so making small changes to your method to test whether small variations have any effect on the result. So you're testing how sensitive the method is to slight variations. So the second set of parameters that we might need to talk about are accuracy and precision. So precision is defined as the ability of a measurement to be consistently reproduced. So our, our target on the left-hand side here, our arrows are consistently hitting the same point. So we're getting very precise measurement in this case. Whereas if we look at accuracy, this is the degree to which something conforms to the fact. So in terms of a measurement, this means the extent to which our measurement conforms to the standard value for that measurement. So for example, our, our target here on the right-hand side, we could say that these, the, the mean of these three arrows in this target is accurate because it's close to the center. However, these three arrows, they're not very precise because they're, they're hitting different points on the same target. In this slide, we're looking at a single result. And what we're trying to illustrate is that a single result is not really sufficient information to tell us much about the precision of our measurement. So if we get only one result, we don't know how precise that is. And we can't really look at the accuracy either because we can't look at its deviation from the mean. So we can't really get a lot of information about repeatability from a single measurement. And in particle sizing, it's also extremely important to make more than one measurement in order to assess the stability of your sample in whatever dispersion that you're measuring.